To be totally honest with you, I don't really care about the spec sheet, but since Creality sent me this scanner for free, I will have to tell you the features that it offers. So it has up to 0.2 mm accuracy, has a large scanning range, can scan objects ranging from 10 cubic millimeters to 2000 cubic millimeters. It has quick scanning speeds up to 20 frames per second and can scan black or metal objects without spraying with the special spray. It has shaking reduction system, 24-bit full color scanning and friendly and intuitive software. Now without further ado, let's go check if this can be of any assistance to our modeling needs. So let's start with this model here. This is Tamiya's 124 scale. 959 and this openable uh, engine bay hatch needs some detail on the inside where I want to add cooling fan assembly and maybe some hinges so it will be much easier for me if I can uh, scan this and then use it as a template in the CAD software so let's try and scan it it is one of the less demanding tasks that this Creality author needs to perform and let's see how good it will do this Okay, so we have live image And Let's start the process The more points we capture the better on the left side of the screen you can see we have a bar that shows us how good of a distance is kept from the model and it is easy to follow when of course the monitor is in front of you I think with larger models or larger items it will be far easier to hold the right position. Now, when we have such undercuts, obviously, I cannot put the scanner inside, so there is one limitation. I will try to get all possible angles. Okay, we lost track, which is not a nice thing to happen, but okay found its position so I think that the important data is captured let's stop the scan here this is the data point cloud and we can eliminate some of the things that we don't need at this point because it is not necessary to have extra computing time for no reason. I think I can get this portion out. I don't need that. Here we have some more. That's not necessary. And here we have the options. Resolution, the smallest. Let's push the sensitivity. I'm not entirely sure if this works, but okay. And here, <coughs> depending on the speed that your computer can generate, it will take a while or not. It depends. All right, here we have the point cloud, and I think it looks pretty nice. There are some areas which I was not able to reach, but it seems like something that I will have no problem working with. So next step will be to uh, make a mesh out of this. I just did not get the details in, but anyways, let's leave it 
to do its job. So here is a trimmed version of what I got. Now we can do some more trimming, but I want to point out that in this software, I would very much like to have some fixed positions, X, Y, and Z axis, and the chance to look from top, left, right, you know, something that is fixed. As you may know, the less faces we have, the easier time the computer will have. We want to get rid of all unnecessary data. And this I will export as a STL file for further work on it. So let's move on to something a little bit different and perhaps more demanding. Now I will add a new scan in this test project. We'll have the same settings, normal object the size is small, we'll take geometry, we'll have high accuracy and we'll exclude flat base. So let's scan. This time I'm using a turntable because it's more comfortable. I don't need to move the scanner around, I just need to rotate the table and this way I will get a good image from all sides. So the more points we get, the better model we will receive at the end. Now this that we are scanning right now is a engine cover, again from Porsche Carrera GT from Tamiya in 1 to 24 scale. Here Tamiya decided to give us the mesh in the form of clear plastic with some decals, which I really don't want to use. So I'll try to make a 3D model that will represent the mesh as it is supposed to be or as near as possible. So Let's try to give it a little bit more depth here. Go down and capture some more details. Now the thin parts are going to be more troublesome. It is what it is, I guess. For now, we're doing a great job, I think. And this will be all for this scan. Let's complete it. And we have the point cloud. I will do a selection. This time I will select my image that I want. Select inverse and delete the rest. Okay, now we have a resolution of 0.05 sensitivity of one and let's process that all right we have the point cloud now let's trim a little bit further but i can already see that we have some very nice results okay that's nice we have some unwanted details but anyhow it's not going to be that important here i will want some more faces let's do three million faces that's a lot but the noise one and create the mesh the next item is this very small windshield from a MI4 helicopter in 1 to 70 second scale. It is going to be real difficult for the author to get any data from that. As you can see, 
it is painted and even I added some wash everything to be able to give the software something to work with. Uh, I tried of course with the unpainted clear plastic detail but it just did not want to do anything. So the more I can give it the better and let's see what is going to happen. Here of course we are going to lose tracking more than usual because the object is so small. I think we are getting near what is possible with this scanner. But if we can get a usable STL file from this, I think we will have a winner here. And the other as many points as possible. There we have it. Okay, I think it is enough. Let's stop it. By the way, there is a button directly on the scanner that allows us to start and stop the scan. Now complete the scan and here we have the point cloud. Probably we have more points outside of the model than on it. So let's get rid of those real fast and we'll do more detailed cleanup when the point cloud is done so we don't do any harm resolution sensitivity and let's get it calculating all right here is the point cloud not bad i think i guess it will be sufficient to make a decent 3d model out of this thing let's get rid of that and this is what we have this pieces here i will not bother with it is difficult here not having a straight on or view so let's get it the familiar three million faces remove the whole filling enclosure because they do issues and start the procedure this time it was fast and this is the finished product in the form of a um, mesh. I mean, the model is not as sharp as the previous ones, but since it is so small, I think we can expect and accept this because we can still work with that, I think. Let's export it and move on to the conclusion. Now we are in Fusion 360 and we are looking at the smallest of our files that we created and I think in general we are very good here. Let's check some dimensions roughly and yes it's about as close to the original as I think it is possible. So in this aspect, we're bang on. And of course, from this moment on, it is up to the abilities of the operator to create a model that will be printable and accurate and good looking and so on. In conclusion, I can say that apparently the Creality Otter scanner works very well for our modeling needs other than scanning models to use as templates to create additional parts you can scan real life objects 
and use them directly, scale them down and use them in dioramas or whatnot. Obviously, scanning larger objects will deliver better results than something as small as I showed you. So there is that. Of course, the machine has its limitations like any other and we need to understand those limitations and work around them. So there you have it. I hope this video has been useful for you. And if you want to have more videos of this digital to real world path of creation, let me know in the comment section and I'll do more of them. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, happy modeling, fellas.